but the devotional opens by saying, you have made it through the night. Nighttime can be the toughest time for a grieving heart because once the lights go off and everyone is sound asleep, reality hits you the hardest. And he was saying that I know how we can all relate to this after suffering the loss of a loved one. When someone in our life passes away, it's hard to sleep. Our minds start to wander and race, trying to grasp the reality of what has happened. You keep asking yourself, is this really real? Is this new reality that, that you got to live, is this all going to make sense to you now? And he said that as the night goes on, you can't help but reminisce on the times that you spent with your loved ones. And he was saying that, they, that he often remembered their laugh and you remember their smile. And then he said, the writer said that she could even, was even deceived to hearing the, the sound of her baby. So this writer lost her baby and she was believing that she heard the baby making noises in the other room. So the writer says, I recall one night I dozed off and I heard Bailey cooing in a song. It went on until finally I opened my eyes in hopes that it was real, that hurt no more. And it says that our minds and hearts want things to be different because we have no control over our helplessness. Who tonight can describe how we handle feelings of helplessness? Helplessness. Can anybody describe tonight how we handle feelings of helplessness? Yeah, um, it's Brother Turner. Go ahead, Brother Whenever Turner. I hear, you know, get some real sad news, it, it humbles me uh, quite a bit. And, you know, it makes me sit down and, and, and think about all the, the, the times that I might, I've spent with that person. And, you know, like uh, my bus mate, Chef Gardner, y'all know him, he passed away. And, and all I could think about was his sisters and, you know, the times that we spent all those years riding the school bus from Cross the Creek all the way to Sylvania, and, you know, and all the conversations that we had. I mean, it might have been long ago, but those were great memories. And, you know, it was great times in our lives. And, you know, because we kind of we grew up together, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of hard. Sometimes you just have to sit back and, and think and just pray to God and especially when the person was might have been younger than you, you know, it, it, it's kind of hard to take in and, and it makes you think, you know, it could have been me. Amen. And uh, so I just have to sit back and, and pray and, and, and tell God, thank you for each day when I wake up. Amen. That's a great way to handle helplessness. Anybody else got a comment on how they handle the feelings of helplessness? Hey, Pastor, this is uh, Reverend Clear, if you can hear me. Yes, we hear you. Oh, wonderful. And I, and I thank you, Pastor, for uh, taking the baton. Uh, for me, yes, it's, it's um, you know, it's, the best way I can explain it is praying. I mean, Brother Turner just said it. You know, no matter how hard things get, one thing you can always remember is to pray. When all else fails and all else ceases, prayer can get you through. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? I would just like to say um, <clears throat> prayer and standing on your faith and what you believe. Amen. You know, trusting in God and knowing that knowing that you see that person again. Amen. And and yes, it's hard, and 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 I'm talking from experience because i lost three sisters right behind one another yeah. another and yes you keep thinking about it about mm -hmm. them and all the, the good times and the bad times and but what you know what i know is when you put your face and trust in god and you know that he is going to bring you through this you know and, and god understands and he wants us to lean not that own understanding mm -hmm. lean not to how we don't don't let our emotion get the best of us but, but but praise him like all, all the brothers said before me. Praise God and give him thanks because in everything we need to give God thanks 
because it's the father's will, you know, but yes, it does hurt. Mm -hmm. It does hurt. And, but, but God, time and God will heal that hurt. Right. But God wanted want us to don't dwell on those things because we can't bring them back. You know, just like he told Dave, 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 David, your son can't come back with you, but you can go, you can be with him, but you got to live right. Amen. You got to be right. So rely on God, put your trust in God. Amen. Thank you all. Well, when I looked up the definition of helplessness, it said that it was an inability to defend oneself or to act effectively. And it said that it was the worst of all feelings in the world, helplessness. And then when I thought about this definition, I thought about the times in my life when I felt helpless. And this definition was right on time. It was times when I wanted to help somebody, but I couldn't. And when I maybe wanted to even help myself, but I couldn't. And it was indeed the worst feeling of all. But as I've grown in Christ, I've had less and less of these feelings of helplessness. I've learned to look at the scripture, look at the word, and look at verses like Psalm 121, 1 and 2, which says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made the heaven and the earth. So we have to remember, church, where our help and our strength come from. That power comes from God. And we have to remember that we have a shepherd who will never leave us nor forsake us. He is our battle axe and we are never helpless because he is all powerful. So thank you all for your comments. Amen. The devotional goes on to say that the nights add to that pain. And she said, when you add in the loneliness of it all, you wonder if you even want to face tomorrow. She writes, grief sucks the very joy that you once found in your life right out of you. And she says, yes, you're surrounded by your friends and your family, but you miss your loved one. So you mourn, you cry endlessly, you feel the ache in your heart and nothing makes sense to you anymore. But she says, I want to tell you that there is hope found in the scripture for tonight. And that hope is coming from the book of Matthew 4, 5 and 4. And this is what our dear daughter Ashante brought out in our last session. And she said, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. So the writer asked, blessed? How so? This pain is like anything but a blessing. So she's asking, how could Jesus say this is a blessing? So my second question to you tonight, class, is what do you think Jesus meant by blessed are those who mourn for I think that God meant that he, you know, everything that we have or us, our whole being, we have to go back to him. So, you know, when you have this worldly experience, it's because we all have to go back to him. So I think he's saying that, you know, you'll be blessed in your morning. He'll wrap his arms around you. He'll be there for you and comfort you. But it's, I don't want to say it's not yours to mourn, but it's not yours to to feel so, um, you know, connected to that individual when they go on because we all have to go on, go back to the Lord. It, it says it in the Bible. It says it in his word. And he does everything but lie. And we have to trust in his word. And we have to know that thus said the Lord. We belong to him. We can't take ownership of his people, you know. And I think that's what he means. He'll bless you. He'll love on you. He'll comfort you. But everyone must return back to him. And I think that's what he means. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My wise daughter. Anybody else got any comments? Blessed are those who mourn. Well, when I looked it up, my research, it, I found that I believe that blessed are those that mourn means that God blesses those who have a tender heart and experience a broken heart. 
If we believe that God's grace and sovereignty are greater than any loss or disappointment that we experience on this the joys in the midst of our, sor of our sorrow, we have to remember that God's grace is sufficient and he is a sovereign God. He makes no mistakes. We have a birth date and we have a death date. Jesus wants his followers to understand that those who experience mourning are not hopeless. That much sadness goes on in this life. And it's not all just a result of sin, but it's just from life in general, like sickness. And Corinthians 1, 3 through 5 says, praise be to God, our Father, our Lord, Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of comfort. And when we believe this, we will be freed from mourning for eternity, which is evidenced in Revelation 21, 4, which says he will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death and no more mourning and no more pain. The former things have passed away. So we can be comforted in our mourning. So thank you all for your comments. The writer goes on to say that although blessed are they that mourn may be hard to grasp at this moment, as you continue on this journey, you will come to understand just how life-changing the comfort of Jesus truly is. So those late nights when you're lying in your bed and the tears fill your pillow, God is comforting you. He's collecting those tears and ever so silently and gently cradling your heart. Psalms 56 and 8 says, record my misery. List my tears on your scroll. Are they not in your record? The lesson closes out tonight by saying, for every ounce of confusion in your life, TRW, for every ounce of confusion, God is pouring in his understanding of it all. So if you continue to trust him and allow him to comfort you, he will get you through. You will realize just how blessed you really are even in your morning. So the author offers a practical tip for us to use to help us as we deal with grief. She says, I encourage you to write some scriptures of affirmation on a sticky note and place them all around your house, even in your car. Affirmation of God's truth is vital. She said it was vital to her finding peace in the beginning stages of her grief when she lost her baby. She said it was the only way to offset Satan's lies. And she said Satan was trying to make her think she would never get through the loss of her child. But when she put these affirmations of God's word all around her, when these thoughts started to enter her mind, all she had to do was look up at those sticky notes and they would be reminding her of God's truth. And she said it was vital to her finding peace. So she said, give this a try if you are going through mourning. And she says, though I felt cursed, she felt cursed. She said, the verse of today reminds me that I was blessed even in my morning. So church, I want you to know tonight that, that if you are mourning the loss of a loved one, remember you are blessed because the God that you serve is comforting you right now, even from the beginning of the, of the transformation of your loved one, right then did God start to bless you and heal you. So always remember that. 
Do we have any final comments before we close out in prayer? Any final comments? Sir, this is uh, Reverend Clare. Again, um, I just wanted to highlight one word that you said, you know, as, uh, as we lose our loved one, that at that moment, you know, even in that um, solemn moment, we must realize, and the word says it, you know, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So if you know that individual, the life that they live, you know, and you should have the faith amen, to know that once they transition, where they were headed, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Well, if all hearts and minds are clear, thank you for hearing me instead of uh, Pastor Claire because of his technical difficulties, but we praise God for all that has taken place. Let us close out in prayer tonight. Dear Lord, hallelujah. Thank you for this lesson that teaches us that we are blessed even when we mourn. For those who are in Christ Jesus, we can rest assured that we will be comforted. We are comforted, Lord, by that gift that you gave to us. And that gift is your Holy Spirit that dwells, hallelujah, in each of us. For we know that Jesus said, if you love me and keep my commands, I will ask the Father and he will give you an advocate to help you to be with you forever. And we thank you for that Holy Spirit, hallelujah. So we thank you right now for the Holy Spirit that comfort us even when we mourn. And we thank you, God, for everyone under the sound of my voice. And we pray that this lesson will help them find peace and that everything that has taken place is acceptable and pleasing in your sight. May God continue to be with you and bless you and keep you all. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Good night. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you all for joining us. We thank you and look forward to seeing you again on next Tuesday for our third lesson, Grief from a Loss. Amen. 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 Good night. Good night. Love you all. Good night. Have a good, good night. Good night. Hey there. <laughs> hey, Tiff. Hope yeah. everything is well. I know y'all got great weather in Belize. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Good night. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night Sandra. Good night, Noah. Good night, Pastor Fields and Elaine. Oh, Rita, thank you for the card. Good night. All right, y'all be safe.